the case of Peter Obi is more interesting. Here was a guy who was kept out of power for three years. He won election in 2003. Mm. But I, for me, I do not expect that the government that will be inaugurated on the 29th of May would think it's going to be business as usual. That question of legitimacy will have to be addressed. <laughs> Femi Falana, you are a well-respected Nigerian lawyer, a senior advocate of Nigeria. I have always loved to listen to you because you are full of wisdom. Your track record speaks for you in Nigeria. Watch this video and see if there is anything that will stop May 29th. All of you who are screaming and shouting, May 29, May 29, nothing will stop May 29. People like us don't work with May 29 because somebody like Peter B, we know him, we know his antecedent. If Peter B does not reclaim his mandate before May 29, he will certainly reclaim it after May 29. And I am saying it again. Obi Pito Obi fought for his mandate in Anambra State for three years and after three years he regained his mandate and he assumed office and concluded his eight years without interruption. That is the man Nigerians they sing praise they follow simply because he's a man of character, he's a man of competence and he's a man with a very beautiful track record. They don't try to do several things to carry this man, rope him in into a crime he did not commit. Nothing was found against him. Listen to Femi Falana. Even though I know that the judges of the appeal court will not put Nigerians to shame before May 29th because the evidence, they're very plenty. The evidence, they're very glaring. Watch the video. Listen to uh, Femi Falana, a lawyer, the senior advocate of Nigeria. And then you will understand that somebody like Peter B, like I always say, if there is anybody that believes in Nigerian judiciary more than any other person, that person is Peter B. And this has manifested in his speeches. When he when he talks, you will see you will see it. And the content of this video will reveal to you why the oppositions are seriously fighting tooth and nail to make sure that they dent the image of Peter B. Because Peter B is a man who has who has a very clear you know history of himself a man who is known with competency uh, for known for competency and character and senior advocate of nigeria what a pleasure and an honor to have you here as always thank you very much i thought i was listening to a pastor <laughs> you mean when we're talking about lamentation yeah well it's only in, in, as it relates to the kind of testament yeah but nigeria's big elections the official results Obviously, it came in some time ago in favor of Bola Tinubu and the APC, but now it's mired in legal challenges and lamentations of almost biblical proportions, yet the inauguration is going ahead because that's the law. But is it a moral, ethically sound law? Is it a fair rule? Sir, I, I think it's too late in the day. Uh to cry or be mona Since to cry or be mona Since 2010, we have engaged in a consistent campaign for far-reaching electoral reform along the lines suggested, the recommendations of the Waste Panel, which I said on this uh, forum, uh, those recommendations were adopted by the panel set up by uh, uh, President Jonathan following the crisis uh, that attended the 2011 President presidential uh, election. Yaradua. Yeah, no, it was a waste panel was set up by President Yaradua. Right. President Jonathan set up the Ahmed Lemu uh, panel, right. which adopted the recommendations of okay, uh, yes, I see what you mean. Yeah. Away, per se. Again, President Buhari set up the Ken Namani panel, which also adopted the basic recommendations of the West panel. Yeah. But to master the political will, to master the political will to implement this recommendation have always been a problem. Because the people in power want to take advantage of the loopholes in the law, including those who are complaining now. And if you look at the dramatic personnel, which of them has not enjoyed what we are criticizing now? 
Governor Bola Tinubu, Vice President Antiko, Peter Obi, if I'm more than anybody, had their elections challenged. And when those elections were challenged, they were in power. President Obama and Vice President Antiko in 2003 and 2007, when they were challenged by candidates, General Muhammad Buhari, they were in power. In fact, in 2003, the election petition did not end until 2005. Now, the case of Peter Obi is more interesting. Here was a guy who was kept out of power for three years. He won election in 2003. Mm. But I might declare that uh, Dr. Kissing was the winner of the election. So, the petition was contested for 35 months, almost three years. And the fairness to Governor Obi, after the verdict of the Court of Appeal, so what? I better go to the office to complete, you know, to spend whatever is left of the time. And I said, no. I would run like a liar in Lagos. No! Your opponent had no time of office because his election had been allowed. So you can't complete his time of office. So you are going to start your own four year tenure the moment you take your oath of office. Every lawyer said I was talking about cool. But later, he took advantage of my position and fought the matter from the High Court of the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court made a point that your four-year tenure commences the day you are sworn in. Mm. So, I, I, I think I was, you know, I, I, I was discussing, I think, sometime last year. Okay. Governor Obi, you took advantage of my advice. You haven't paid me. You haven't paid me. You know, I like that. Uh, it was a public duty. You they didn't buy you a bottle of champagne? I'm disappointed. <laughs> no, no, you just said no. You, you know, you were rendering a public service. Yeah, yeah, of course. But after that, in 2007, no, 2009, Obi won the election. And the Uba went to court to say, whereas in 2007, INEC had con conducted an election, which was illegal anyway, and he said he had won. Therefore, my term of office, <laughs> you know, was kept in the cooler. What are you talking about? Again, the party went up to the Supreme Court. From the Obi was in office. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the Supreme Court upheld you know, and decided that the election the gentleman was talking about was illegally conducted. Dr. Dachi Ahmed won election to decide in 2011. I think under the platform of CPC, his opponent, uh, former Governor McAfee, went to court and was in court for almost a year. Eventually won, and Dr. Dati Ahmed, who had been in the parliament, was then asked to vacate because it was proved that he didn't win the election. But he spent about a year in the parliament. So, this is the position. What the respected Cardinal Onayekan is talking about is what in law we call delegate veranda as opposed to delegate. You know, what the law is as opposed to what the law should be. I, I, for me, I, 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 I've, I've always believed that all election petitions should be concluded before the inauguration of an incoming government. But again, this time, it's not limited to uh, the president-elect. All the governors who have been elected, including the uh, LP, Labour Party, uh, governorship candidate and um, uh, 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 government-elect in Abiyas, in Abiyas will be sworn in. All the legislators who have been declared winners of the election on the platform of PC, um, APC, uh, PDP, Labour Party, and all of them will also be inaugurated on the 29th. Right. But for, for me, for the benefit of our audience um, who may not know these things, what is the law as it stands today yeah. with regard, for example, to the presidential yeah. Yeah. Now, um, you know, tribunal? I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, there are different time frames yeah. for each level, but, but, aren't there? But virtue of section 285 of the Constitution, mm. initial petitions shall be have our court and determine within a period of 180 days, that's six months. That is on the tribunal level. Yes. Yeah, the president. Also, at the court of appeal level. Right. So that's another six months. No, no, no. For the presidential election, right, it starts at the court of appeal, and then you have an option to go to the supreme court. Yes. So if you have 180 days in the court of appeal, you have additional two months, 60 days in the supreme court. Right. In the case of governorship, which is the only one that allows for three states. Yeah. You go to the election petition tribunal for 180 days, court of appeal for 60 days, Supreme Court for 60 days. That's keeping the governor in office for 10 months. Yeah. While his opponent or his opponents are fighting the legitimacy of his election. So this is the position. In fact, uh, there's a provision of the Electoral Act, I think section 120, which provides that. Even in the tribunal or the court of appeal, this time around. Since the man who has been declared the winner of the election has not been properly elected, he has 21 days to appeal. Mm. Again, and he still he remains in office, right? Once the appeal is filed within 21 days, right? So that is the law now. But what you know? But for me, mm. these provisions were made when nobody thought we were going to have electronic. Like in other African countries, and this is very sad for us. In 2017, the Supreme Court of Kenya decided the election petition, presidential election petition, within 14 days. Mm. And I drew the attention of Nigeria to that development. I, I wrote a piece which was widely circulated in the media, uh, entitled "Electoral Justice." in Kenya and Nigeria. And I call, drew the attention of my colleagues particularly mm. to the need for us to ask for an amendment of the Constitution. Because in other African countries, even Ghana here, yeah, the, the challenge of the presidential election is only taken at the Supreme Court. Mm. In Kenya, it's the same thing. You don't begin at the Court of Appeal. Two, yeah, so it goes straight to the Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. Yeah. In most other African countries, yeah. other African countries, you have constitutional courts. These petitions go to the constitutional court, mm -hmm. which, which these courts have 14 days to conclude the election petitions. At the time, the constitution provided for six months. Nobody thought we're going to have the use of reverse machine mm -hmm. or transmission of election results to the central server of INEC. So if we make the system to work, right? For me, all you need will be the reports of the Beaver's machine that has captured accreditation mm. and the results that have been uploaded to the IRS. To the IRS. But what I, I if you to have yeah. those two mm. uh, 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 reports, you're pretty much sorted. You can't even have the petition decided in 14 days. Yeah, but what I don't understand.